Sorry, I was disassociating. Welcome to One Killer Question, the only Murders in the Building after show. I'm your host, Michael Cyril Creighton. So in this episode, Charles goes to the White Room. What room? White Room, it's an actor thing. A, a stage thing. There's serenity in his mind, but what the hell is happening to his body? I'd like to welcome Andrea Martin. Hello and Kara Wang. Hello, hello. <laughs> Welcome, it's so nice to have you guys here. Okay, the white room. What really happened to Charles in there? It's when Steve goes into the room, it's like he's smiling, the music is playing, like it seems very serene. When you're in the white room, or a white room, I would assume you're relaxed, it's meditative, you're going inside. I mean, the last thing you want are pants on. You know, you want to just be totally unencumbered. It seems to present as a very serene place mm -hmm. when, once you're in it. Yeah. But when you're out of it, very scary. May I step out to call my therapist? Yes, of course you can. I've never seen Charles look disheveled, mm. hair messed up, Holding those babies. The babies. <laughs> What's going on with those babies? When we think of babies, we think of screaming. We think of poop flying everywhere. We think of the chaos that yeah. they bring. Oh, you I, know? Think, I think in the white room, there was definitely poop flying everywhere. <laughs> because when it's he comes possible. out of it, when, we, when the music sort of fades away, yeah. we start hearing the sounds of, I think, monkeys or perhaps an antelope. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You know what, we need an animal wrangler here <laughs> right. when I do my bit. Thank you for doing that, yeah. that made my day. Let's look at the white room a little differently. Is it possible that Charles is possessed by a demon? A demon that hates creepy baby dolls. As in like the demon takes over and pushes Charles into the white room and then takes over his body in real life. Right. Maybe, the demon, the demon wants to come out to play. <laughs> I don't know, like, I, I, don't, I don't. <laughs> Would Disney want to play it, pay another principal? <laughs> right. <laughs> the demon can only do one episode. We don't have enough. <laughs> yeah. But then the final white room. Yeah. That's with the, where he's doing the fish, where he's making. Yeah. With this white room is all about joy. He seems very content and serene. It's not like he's fighting anything. Yeah. And this is my imagination. So yeah. maybe he feels like he's one with joy. When he comes out of the white room, we see joy beaming, so happy. This has been in the works for decades, right? They've yeah. known each other for so long. And you see Charles completely panicked and he has pearls around his neck and he's holding <laughs> flowers. Yeah, he's those definitely... pearls and the flowers are from the fish tank. Oh, and from so the is, treasure And chest. so is the little ring that he puts on her finger. It's um, like little um, uh, trinkets that are in the um, fish tank. The oh, trinkets wow. for the fish, yeah. So that means in real time, he reached his hands yeah. into the tank yes. to get these yes. items yes. to yeah. present okay. to you. Yes, and I, I honestly believe that part of him wants to ask Joy to marry him, but he's so caught up in fear and baggage from mm -hmm. his life. And yes, he's he so not used to a commitment. I think that Charles does want to be with Joy. I think, like yeah. you were saying, it's just like the practical logistics of what life, how it changes his daily life freaks him out so much. And that's what I think catapulted him into the white room. Right. I'm with Kara. Yeah, I'm with Kara too. <laughs> I'm with Kara. <laughs> Team Joy. As clearly as, as anyone could. Okay, so I think it's clear we might never know what happens in the white room, but what is clear to me, it's time to play One Killer Game. So we're gonna tell our own white room stories. A time you totally blanked. What set it off and what happened? Andrea, mm -hmm. we will start with you. Lights, please. Well, I was um, in the wings of a theater, about to go on, 
my own show called Andrea Martin, Final Days, Everything Must Go. Went out with a lot of energy and Seth Rudesky was playing the piano when I started. The audience cheering, I've just hit town, so come on down, there ain't nothing I won't show. A merry mix of songs and shticks and everything must go. You didn't know where I was, couldn't remember a lyric. The audience just felt like one big blob of poo, just right there in the audience. It didn't feel like a blob of poo, but it did feel like I was the blob of poo, and I couldn't get it back, and then all of a sudden something just switched, and I was able to resume with the lyrics, but it was so terrifying. That's it. Oh, my gosh. Wow. First of all, <laughs> that is the best title for a show ever. <laughs> Fantastic title. Yeah. That must be scary. I've, I've forgotten lines on stage, but in a musical. It's really tough because the music continues. It's not like you can... Um, take a dramatic be beat. Yeah, you can't yeah. take a dramatic pause. I have my own white room story. Light, please. I was doing a play downtown. A beautiful play. It was about a theater company, a traveling theater company during the Black Plague. And I had a 20-minute monologue as the playwright. And the monologue was about death and identity and medieval art. And we had a student matinee. So we get to this monologue. I start saying the words. And I completely leave my body. I do not remember doing the monologue. I do not remember anything that happened. I come off stage and I say to the stage manager, it went well. I think they really liked it. And she said, Michael, you cut 10 minutes off of the play. And I said, did I cut lines? Did I, did I take stuff out of the play? Because it was so well written. And she said, no, you just talked really fast. <laughs> <laughs> so I was sort of in slow motion in my head. Right. But in physical sense, I was going real fast. Oh my God! Ten it, it makes me nervous of, hearing yeah. these stories. Yeah, right. And totally. It can I wish to I were you. in a white room right now, away from everybody here. Kara, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for your white room story. Well, my white room story. I remember. I was 19. I was moving to China. And I just remember getting on the plane. There was a toddler that was sitting next to me that was crying. And then I just remember going blank and then landing in Beijing. I was like, did I fall asleep? I looked in the mirror and my eyes were so swollen. I, I, I know I was crying. And I don't remember doing any of it. Wow. <laughs> I thought that story was going to end with you holding the toddler by the ankle. <laughs> <laughs> Swinging it in, I, in the rafters. You know, I should have. Well, this has been such a pleasure. Thank you for being here. And this has been One Killer Question. Until next time, take care of yourself.